Hi everyone, and uh, welcome back to our second episode of What's Up With That, Alex? Hey, this Simon. is a, oh, hi. Uh, this <laughs> is a uh, this is a series that we've uh, started, which uh, really flowed from um, my separation and divorce, and questions that came up for me when I was uh, going through it so many years ago. Not to mention my expertise in the area. I suppose that's true as well. <laughs> and you know what, Alex? I brought out sort of a uh, special little treat today, and that is this uh, roaring fire yeah, that's behind us. I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> sort of basking in its comforting glow right now. <laughs> So um, I want to, you know, we're getting close to Christmas, so I wanted to make this a little bit of a fireside chat. So are you ready, Alex? I am as ready as I'm ever going to be. Okay, my question to you today is this. A number of people have come up to me and have said, Simon, I, I've been told when you're going through a separation divorce, never leave the house, never leave the family house. If you're going through that kind of a situation, just stick it out, move into the basement, but the last thing you want to do is move out of the house. So wh what's up with that, Alex? Uh, yeah, that's a common theme, and it's advice people often get, sometimes from lawyers and sometimes from friends and well-wishers and, and so on. Well-wishers. Uh, or maybe not so well-wishers. <laughs> uh, but, and it is, there, there's truth to it. It's not a universal rule, but there are situations in which it is better to stay in the house. And I think there's kind of two overall uh, scenarios when it is important. The first is if you have children, and especially young children, it's often the case that the parent who moves out of the house does so uh, into like temporary accommodations or maybe with a family member and without having any kind of particular uh, arrangements in place for the children. So if you move out of the house and you move in with your parents or you move into a friend's place and there's no way for your kids to stay, this goes on for a period of time, the parent who's at home with the kids is going to build up uh, a sort of a precedent or a pattern of looking for after the kids uh, more often than not. Uh, this is sometimes called the status quo by the court. And courts often, uh, whether explicitly or implicitly, favor the status quo, meaning that if something has happened over time and it seems to be working, the courts are a bit reluctant to upset that. Right. So uh, when you have kids, if you are going to move out of the house, and you know sometimes you have to, if at all possible, it's, uh, you should make those arrangements ahead of time. Make sure there's somewhere where you can move where the kids can come to. Right. Make sure there's an agreement or something in place for how sharing of the children is going to work. Right. If that's in place, then the... Um, need to stay in the same house is a lot less important. The second scenario has to do with where one spouse or, or really both spouses want to keep the house. It's often the case that if one spouse moves out and the other stays there, uh, the, house, the person that stays there tends to be more likely to get the house at the end of the day. The other parent or other spouse is compensated for it, but if there's a competition about who's actually going to get to keep it, you know, the person who has moved out and has got a new place and is refurnished or done whatever they need to do uh, is a lot less likely to be moving back into the home. Mm -hmm. So if there's a real um, tension about who's ultimately going to stay in the home, in that case, it may be better to not move out. Mm -hmm. But all of that is subject to, I think, uh, you know, one very important consideration, which is that sharing a house with somebody that you're separating from is horrible and toxic and not always a good idea, notwithstanding these other issues. It may be better, even if you do have kids, and even if you both want the house, if it's going to drive you crazy, if there's going to be violence, if there's going to be real uh, problems with cohabitating, it's better to move out in that, that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Like You can't uh, put a price on emotional well-being in that way. So you know, it, is, it can be true that moving out can be a disadvantage, uh, but it, it may still be worth it. And often my focus would be on, OK, how do we move out in a way that limits those disadvantages? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you, Alex. That was very informative. I know from um, <laughs> my own experience, uh, I moved out of the house and, um, you know, my lawyer uh, encouraged me, rightfully so, to uh, as quickly as I could find a place that uh, I was going to be able to parent, which were very, then very young children. Um, so um, there is a period of uh, called like, discombobulation uh, that comes from the separation. And often these things aren't uh, are, aren't planned. Um, you're not thinking sort of six months in advance. How is this thing going to unfold? Uh, so you know it's a very stressful time. A lot of questions uh, come up, and I would encourage our viewers that if anyone is thinking of going through a separation. Uh, there's nothing wrong with going and seeing a lawyer before you actually have that final discussion with your spouse, just so you can get a lay of the land. I'm not suggesting that you know, uh, you're going to be able to take advantage of the situation. That's not what seeing a lawyer is about. Mm -hmm. It's about just understanding your rights and uh, making sure that you're not making choices in the heat of the moment that are going to somehow affect you negatively uh, in the future. Yeah, and you know, mitigating those problems if they're going to come up, what can you do to limit them? Right. So I agree with that.
Great. Thanks, well, Martin. thank you so much for answering that question. My and pleasure. Great. And thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, we uh, wish you uh, a happy day.